Hey, welcome. Thanks for joining me. This is Antonius, and I want to do a little series using the image capture wizard and actually automating some screen click events with it, actually, uh, actually because it's such a great tool. I want to demonstrate just how useful it could be. Now, if you're looking at the screen, what you'll see here is I have this big old screen, and I have 36 checkboxes, and what I need to do is I have to click off a number of these guys. To tell you the truth, not just a number of them, I have to click off every checkbox from the top to the bottom, except the bottom two. I need to leave these two blank and the top one blank. So I'm actually going to use the image recognition wizard to look for all the checkboxes and then do the clicking for me. All right, so let me fire up my macro scheduler right here. I'm going to just go with a brand new macro for this. First step first, just because I'm starting this guy out, I'm going to actually click there and save it. Just start with the save. It's actually a really good practice, get in the habit of doing that. Um, and since I, what I want to do here is look on the screen, I want to actually make sure that uh, the window I'm looking for, let me move this out of the way, the window I'm looking for over here is going to be present. So it's one of my little tricks for making sure when I'm actually searching the screen with the find image position wizard that I actually get what I want. So the first thing I do is focus on the window I want to interact with. Okay. So to do that, it's going to pull out one of these window functions. And it's, oh, window functions, whoops. Window objects, window functions, close enough. It's the set focus. Oh, great, great little function. If I select it here from Code Builder, it allows me to do a quick pull down and I can find the actual title of the window I want to interact with. That's all I'm going to need. So it's, you know, it's open, it's there. The, the uh, Code Builder finds it for me. That's what I meant to say. The Code Builder finds it for me and gives me all these great other options. If I want to deal with child windows, um, adult windows, I'm just going to do with all windows. That's fine. The defaults are work perfectly in most cases. Window titles is what I want. Um, I don't need any regex because uh, I just want to find and search for the full title, and it's going to work perfectly for me. But it's in the wrong place, so shame on me. Make sure I get myself in the right place. Okay. So there you go. First thing I'm going to do is focus on this window. Then I'm going to give myself a second. Wait. Just type it out. What the heck? Half a second. Um, so I'm, I make sure the window, you know, shows up and it's all good. And uh, next thing I'm going to do is just so for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to debug this guy. I want to look for my insert a breakpoint right here. And what that's going to do is I'll show you if I run this macro now, it's going to run up to that breakpoint. And the nice thing about it is it populates my watch list with all the variables that I need this session. It makes it available right here. Okay. So I have that now. Things like comma and this stuff uh, is all available for me. And I'm actually going to use some of this in just a second. So the next step is you want to stop your macro from running. This is the idea of you code a little and you test a little bit, right? Um, and right here I'm going to search search screen just so we know what we're doing okay I'm gonna go back to the code builder and search out and use my image recognition wizard so let me fire this guy up uh, I love this wizard it just it allows you to build code really fast so what do you want to do okay I'm gonna find a position of something on the screen to interact with hit next I'm gonna capture that image okay it's gonna be this checkbox here just a regular empty checkbox. That's what I want to find and click on. All right, does it look good? Yeah, it looks good. It looks like the center is going to work for me. Okay. I'm going to use that guy. So I'm going to search the entire screen perfectly fine. Um, I could also search inside the window box itself in the period processing. But, you know, the screen typically, you know, just in case, it just I just feel more comfortable using that. So it's, it's preference. In this case, you know what? Why not? Why don't we say actually search inside this window? 
Uh, the next step is after I picked what I'm searching for, where I'm going to search for it, I'm going to pick the action that I'm going to do next. So the next thing is I'm going to right click because the right click is actually what activates this guy on or off, right? So I'm going to want to right click in there. The center of the image is perfect. And here's the magic. I'm not going to use correlation type in this case because I want something very different. I want to do exact match. And what that's going to do for me, it's going to bring back a list of all the images it finds. The correlation coefficient just finds the closest match, and it's only one image. But as you can see, I have more than one checkbox on screen. So I definitely want to find all of them. And I'm going to give it a little tolerance, a little wiggle room of 15. Um, no time out in this case. I'm just going to insert the code. So what happened here? OK, we have this one the find image position working here and if we look at the code itself um, it has an X and Y array and number found those are the return values basically so after it finds something on screen and I'm going to just actually show it I'm going to run it <coughs> see that it, it found something and clicked on the first image so let's analyze this and see what happened okay if we look at our watch list here it shows the number found which is one of the return from the function find image position the number found is actually the number of checkboxes so images of checkboxes that it found on the screen it found 26 because some of them were x'd out red so it found only 26 empty ones right and then it went and said okay what's next if if the number found is greater than zero i'm going to do what i'm going to move the mouse to x array underscore zero y array underscore zero and then right click okay where does this come from it actually comes from here inside the find image position function we have an x array y array and we also find them here on the left side so let me click on the y array at the bottom and if you count these up there are 26 of them which is equal to the number found you see that because the number found is 26, it built a list of y positions or coordinates, x and y coordinates, to identify each of these guys. So the first one, underscore 0, which we're going to click on here, is up here. OK. I'm going to shut this off so it's back to normal. So let's say I wanted to click on number 1, 3, 9. Let's just do that, right? What I would do is maybe. If I find enough of these guys, right? Uh, um, first, I'll stop the macro and allow me to edit it. But I would copy that code, paste it in here, and change this. So what did I say? I wanted to put number three. So number three, if I look on my list, one, two, three, that would be two. If I change that to underscore two, underscore two. And if I wanted to click on number nine, let me do that again. And we could actually make that an 8. That should be number 9. And an 8, and that should be number 9. OK. I'm going to go and save this as ugly as it is and just run it. And hopefully 1, 3, and 9 will be clicked off. So let's do this. Boom. Pretty fast, huh? 1, 3, and 9 all clicked off, right? So that's the quick and dirty of how you do it. Um, as you can tell, what we learned here, the key takeaways, is that you use the wizard, and you could it actually inserts, look at this even better, it inserts the comment for you, what you're looking for. So we want to click in the center of a checkbox, right? And then it, it gives you a, a conditional. So if it finds any checkboxes, it's actually going to interact with it. If it doesn't, you could actually make it do something else. But in this case, we just want it to click. And it actually built the first piece of my code, right? It's going to say, hey, if you find one, I want you to move to the first one and click on it. Now, I could copy and paste this, and I could do that for all 33 of these checkboxes. But that's a little tedious. And it's not really the best way to do it. But it's good enough, you know, as a demonstration for the first piece. In the upcoming video that I'm going to show after this, or demonstrate after this, I'm going to show another approach after we've generated this code so we could actually move through everything systematically a lot faster and a lot easier. And to tell you the truth, it's not going to be many more lines of code than what we just did. Okay, so stay tuned. Come back. Check it out.